last time you were thoroughly impressed with a new home theater component? A time when you integrated something new into your system and didn't have to struggle one bit to hear a difference? Well, that's what happened the first time I watched the movie with the SBS PB3000. And this is the review. Stick around. Hey guys, it's Villaman here and on this channel we do tech and home theater unboxings, demos, comparisons, tips and real world reviews to help you select the best components to help transform your space into an awesome home theater because let's face it, hosting movie night is pretty sweet. So if you're new here then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. You should, it's pretty cool. For those unfamiliar with the 3000 series of subwoofers from SVS, they're 13 inch app controlled high excursion subs with an amplifier that puts out 800 watts RMS and 2500 watts of peak power. But that's pretty much where the similarities between the sealed and ported version ends. The one that's being reviewed today, the PB3000, has a frequency response of 16 Hz to 260 Hz in standard ported mode, while it has a frequency response of 18 Hz to 260 Hz in sealed mode. Yes, sealed mode, but we'll get to that part a little bit later. First, let's talk design for a bit. It's huge. It comes in at 22 inches high, 18 inches wide, with a depth of 26 inches, and it weighs in at 82 pounds, so it's pretty heavy, especially when it's compared to its smaller brother, the SB3000 sealed subwoofer. It comes in whatever finish you want, as long as that finish is black ash, of course. Up front, you can't miss the 13 inch high excursion woofer. SPS didn't publish any details on just how much excursion it can achieve, but I gather it's between about two and a half to three inches. Below the woofer are twin three and a half inch ports, which can be plugged with the included foam plugs whenever you want to enable sealed mode. That's done in the SVS app, which gives you full control over everything the sub can do, from dialing in the levels or changing the phase to adjusting the parametric EQ and turning on the movie, music, or even a custom preset. As I said, it controls everything. The traditional controls you may be more used to are located on the back. There you can find the power, volume adjustment, low pass filter selection, RCA inputs and outputs, including LFE, and last but not least, the SoundPath wireless adapter port. That's where you attach an adapter so you can send the signal to the sub wirelessly so you can have more flexibility of placement. Throughout my time with the sub, I have tried my best to give you as good of an impression as I can of what the performance is actually like. And I try to do that with everything I review. So I'll link a playlist in the description with the music and movie demos I've done so far, as well as a sealed versus ported comparison for music for those of you who haven't seen it. She's up on night to the sun. I'm up on night to get some. She's up on night for good fun. I'm up on night to get lucky. We're up on night to the sun. That playlist would also have the comparison with the SVS SB3000 sealed sub, which costs $100 more but has 50% more power. But it's a sealed sub, so. In the intro, I said how impressed I was when I first heard it, and let me just say that that was a consistent experience throughout my time using it. The movie was Overlord, and for those of you who don't know this movie, the sound in the first 20 minutes will leave you in awe. Watching it with this sub had me grinning like an idiot the entire time. The movie was full of low frequency effects of every kind, and the sub recreated it all without breaking a sweat. The speed at which it could transition from atmospheric effects like subsonic frequency sweeps to multiple hard hitting explosions in quick succession was very impressive. What was most impressive about it though was just how much output it could produce at the calibrated level that I had it. The sub was calibrated with Odyssey X32 at negative 27 dB in this room, but I had it running at plus 4 dB hot, so it was set to negative 23 dB. Why? Because I love bass, that's why. The sub also doesn't have a traditional volume knob. It goes from 0 all the way down to negative 60 dB at its lowest. So even at the negative 23 that I had it at, it still had a lot of headroom left. My initial impression was spot on though, because in every situation that I placed the sub in to test, it passed it with flying colors, and I did test it in a lot of situations. In a home theater setting, the sub is phenomenal. The sheer output, poise, and speed of the PB3000 was a joy to experience. But what about music? Well, that was something I also wanted to test because over the years, a lot of us have heard that a ported sub is bad for music because it isn't as tight and musical as a sealed sub. 
and since I've owned the SB4000 for over a year now and I just happen to love listening to two channel music, that was something I was interested in testing. And test I did. I'll also include that video in the playlist link below the like button. When playing music in the standard ported mode, you can actually sometimes hear the sub lingering on certain bass notes, which made the bass line sound very exaggerated and unnatural. Some people may like that kind of exaggerated bass in their music, but it just wasn't for me. So I won't be using it like that anytime soon for any kind of critical listening. But that all changed when I plugged those ports and enabled sealed mode. Doing that essentially made the PB transform. It was tighter and more transient, so the bass no longer sounded exaggerated and unnatural. It blended right into the system, and that's how I would actually use the sub. Plug for music, but with the ports wide open for movies. This sub is absolutely great, but of course it's not perfect. As you can tell, it is a chunky one. The cabinet is not only tall, but deep. So the size of it might give you a hard time trying to find a space for this bad boy in your room. Then there's the other issue. The price. Except in the case of the 1000 series, SPS prices their ported subs somewhat higher than their sealed counterparts. And that makes sense. They have more output and besides that they need more materials to make them. But if you compare the 3000 series to other modern SPS subs like the 4000 series and the Ultra series, then we see where the ported versions of those subs are priced about 25% higher than the sealed version, but at the time of this review, the PB3000 is a whopping 40% more expensive than the sealed version. And I get it, it has a lot of power and output rivaling the SB4000, but the difference is worth noting. So that brings us to the question, who is the sub for? Well, I'd say it's for anyone with a medium sized room to one on the larger side who would primarily be using it for all the output it has in a home theater setting. But its ability to be such a convincing seal sub also make it good for music too. So with all that said, if I was buying a sub right now, would I get it? In a heartbeat. So if you want to buy any of the products I mentioned in the video, then I've left links to everything in the description below. Oh, and one more thing. This week we finally hit 5,000 subscribers. High five. A huge thank you to everyone who's watched my video and subscribed so far, and everyone who has shared it, commented, and liked it. And for those of you watching who haven't subscribed yet, you've stuck around this far, so why haven't you subscribed? <laughs> The review of the SB3000 is also on the way, so make sure to subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on that one. Anyways, the 5K giveaway video is also live, so if you want a chance to win an Apple TV 4K, which is one of my favorite audio video devices, I use that in a lot of the music and video demos I've done so far. It's one of my favorite devices and I want to celebrate by giving someone a chance to win it, so I will leave a link in the description to the video and good luck. And don't forget to like this video and share it on social media. Until next time, this has been your friend in the neighborhood Villa Man saying peace.